Okay, now we're going to go through a uh, Haber Eliminator installation. All right, if you've purchased a, an Eliminator, you're going to have a battery and you're going to have the module itself. The first thing you're going to want to do is install the battery, and I recommend doing this before you do anything else. Um, it's, it's really helpful if you have the battery in here because when you go to push this in, if the battery's not here, you, you'll open the door, you'll push on the door, you'll do all kinds of things, and it's really best to put the battery in first. So that's where we'll start. Okay, now, with the door open, you're going to see two things. One is, under this ribbon, there's a little pictograph in here, and this shows the polarity of the battery. So you're going to want to check that first. If you get it in there backwards, it's not going to start. So you're going to want to look at that little pictograph, and you're going to want to align the battery in the same manner. The second is this little ribbon. Now this little ribbon lays down here, and we're going to install the battery on top of it. The purpose of that ribbon is to make it easy to get the battery out when you, when you need to change your battery. So we're going to lay the ribbon like that. We're going to take our battery. We're going to install it. We're going to push it down to make sure it's sitting all the way down in the tray, like that. We're going to take our door, install it in there and snap it in, make sure it's in there really good. Okay, then we're going to move our switch to green to confirm that the, bat that the motor has power, the battery's in there correctly, everything's running, so we're ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these two nuts. Like that. And we're going to set those, and we're going to move the top retaining plate. We're going to set it there. Now, over here, I have a goggle where I've removed the lens. I did that so I can show you where this fits. Basically, we're going to take this module, and we're going to set this in this part of the goggle like that. Okay, we're going to get it centered in there as best we can. What it does is this module fits between this back flange and this front flange. And so this area here is critical to fit. Um, if this is too narrow, if you're using a, a you know a goggle other than a Haber goggle and this area is too narrow, you're going to have problems with this fitting. So this is the fit criteria right here is this space. The other thing I need to mention are these supporting ribs here. If the module in your goggle hits one of those ribs, you can rotate it one side or the other to miss the ribs. You know you shouldn't be rotating it more than a few millimeters just to miss it. You don't want to get it jacked over one side or the other because then it's going to cause your goggle not to fit. You can, you can modify these ribs a little bit. Some people will drill a hole. Some people will carve a little off here. I don't recommend cutting these ribs. Okay, I don't recommend doing that. It'll affect the structure of the goggle, but if, if you have to do any kind of modification in here, drill a hole or carve a little bit out with a knife, that's, that's certainly okay. All right, so that's our demonstration piece. Now I'm going to go back to our actual goggle installation. I'm going to turn the goggle upside down. I'm going to take our module now and I'm going to fit it in here into the area. I'm going to want to make sure I get it centered in there. I want to make sure that the center of the door is in the center of the nose piece here as best I can. And then I'm going to push it down like that. So I look, I'm good and centered in there. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it over like this and you'll see that the points are pushing up through the foam, the screws. I'm going to take my blue retaining plate and I'm going to put it down like that over the screws. I'm going to take my nuts, and I'm going to set them on there like this. Screw them down like so. Alternating back and forth so we don't get things all, all, all talked out of shape, and there we go. So we look inside. We confirm that we're sitting there in our flanges and everything's good and we're up there, the battery door is on and we're, we're ready to go. Okay, now, there's three switch positions for the eliminator. Red is off, yellow is automatic, and this is the setting we recommend you use most of the time. When it's on yellow, the sensor in the goggle is activated. And what does that mean? That means when moisture rises inside the goggle, before fog can form, it will turn on the fan and the fan will exhaust the air out of the goggle. Now, how does it do that? This over here is an air intake. Warm, moist air goes in here and is vented out the top through here. Okay, when the moisture, when the humidity level inside the goggle gets to normal levels, the sensor will turn the fan off automatically. Typically, when the fan comes on, in the normal situations, it may run for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute or two. 
um, but usually not more than that. It, it, you know, it, it does a pretty good job of moving stuff. This typically happens uh, when you stop moving. And now I want to give a little word about how goggles in general work, just because this will help your, your overall experience. When you are moving, air moving across the bottom of the goggle creates a low pressure area here. It draws air in the top of the goggle and out the bottom. When you stop, the opposite happens. When you stop, air, because warm air rises, rises out the top of your vents. Okay. So one of the things you need to take care of when you use the eliminator, and this is true whether you're using a, a, a goggle with an eliminator or a goggle without an eliminator, you need to keep snow accumulation off the top of this. So periodically on a powder day, you need to make sure you don't have ice or snow in this area over here. Or if you're using it in the summer, you don't. If you get you know huge accumulations of mud up here, that's going to affect how your goggle vents also. So just a word to the wise: uh, try to keep these vent areas clear, you know, because that'll just uh, you know increase your performance of the product. Um, so there we have it. Um, you know, the last thing I should mention is uh, you don't want to leave this out in your your car or your truck overnight on a cold winter night because you don't want uh, you know, moisture condensation inside of the module. That's never a good thing with electronics. So other than, you know, keeping it from temperature extremes, don't leave it on your dash in the summer where temperatures can get over 120. That's not good either. But other than that, it should give you years of enjoyment. And that's our Haber Eliminator installation.